This video is about decision trees. Decision trees are models used to guide decision making between a range of different options. And they do this by looking at the probabilities of the different outcomes which might result from a decision. So this is what a typical decision tree might look like. So we start with the decision at the square and we can either choose in this case to invest in new machinery and that's going to cost us 10 million pounds or we could decide to restructure our staffing at a cost of three million pounds. And we might also add a do nothing option as well, because if all of the possible choices generate a loss for us, then it might be better actually to do nothing. And so for each option, we have the possible outcomes. So here there's the possibility of success and failure with each assigned a probability. And you might have more than two possible outcomes, but all of the prob probabilities have to add up to one. So then we have the return that each outcome is expected to generate at the end here. And what this decision tree is showing us is that we have the option to invest in new machinery, which costs us 10 million pounds, and this has a 90% chance of success. And if it's successful, that would offer us a return of 80 million pounds. But it also has a 10% chance of failure, in which case in the brackets here, we can see that's a negative. So that would offer us a loss of 15 million pounds. We could decide to restructure our staffing and that's going to give us a 50% chance of success, in which case it will offer us a return of 12 million pounds, a 50% chance of failure as well, in which case offering us a return of 5 million pounds. And then finally, we might decide to do nothing with a cost of zero. Now, once we've drawn up the decision tree, we need to calculate the expected value for each of the different options. And we do that, first of all, by multiplying the probability by the return. And we make that calculation for every different possibility. So here we multiply 0 0.9 by 80 million to get 72 million pounds. We'd multiply 0 0.1 by the minus 15 million pounds to get negative 1.5 million pounds. And to get the expected value for that invest in the new machine, machinery option, we add those two together. And in this case, 72 adding the negative 1.5 would give us 70.5 million. We can do the same thing for restructuring the staffing, 0.5 multiplied by 12 to give us 6 million pounds, 0.5 multiplied by the 5 million to give us 2.5 million pounds. We add those together and that gives us the expected value for the restructure staffing option. But the thing the business is going to be really interested in is working out the net gain for each of the different options. And to do that, we simply take the expected value and we take away the initial cost of the option. So for the investment in the new machinery, we'd do the 70.5 million minus the 10 million initial cost to give us 60.5 million pounds. And for the restructuring staffing, we'd do the 8.5 million expected value minus the 3 million cost to give us 5.5 million pounds net gain. So based purely on this decision tree, the option that we would favour would be to invest in the new machinery because it gives us a significantly higher net gain. Decision trees can be a really useful tool in the decision making process because they visually map out the range of different probable outcomes and they use quantitative forecasting to give us a more concrete basis for important decisions rather than just relying on hunches. And that's particularly important actually if a decision turns out to be a failure because you can at least justify your process. And in this case, investing in the new machinery is clearly the option to go for. Uh, but if it does fail, you can say, look, there was a 90% chance we'd have got a return of 80 million pounds. We were unfortunate in this case to make a loss. And also just the process of drawing up the decision tree can encourage managers to consider different possibilities as a result of a decision. It is important to be aware though that decision trees are just one tool in the decision making process. And we should look at a range of other qualitative factors as well alongside the numerical outcome. 
So in this example, the decision tree is categoric that investing in the new machinery is the correct course of action. But it does have a significantly higher cost. And while the chances of and the rewards of the success are really great, there's a still a small chance of making a huge loss. And so for some businesses, they might decide they're not prepared for this risk and they prefer to take the safer option instead, even though the decision tree um, is suggesting a particular course of action. And as with all forecasting techniques, predicting the future is notoriously difficult and any decision tree will be reliant on the quality of the forecast and the data that's provided for it.